Hello, good morning and welcome everybody as we come together for what would normally have been our all age worship service. So we have got an activity today for the children to be involved in. And if you want to gather the things that you're going to need during the first hymn, that would be really helpful. You're going to need a sheet of A4 coloured card or paper. You're going to need um, a glue stick and a felt tip pen or some colouring, something to colour with. And you're also going to need some paper. Um, there's a couple of downloads. You'll find these below in the description of this video and also on the Facebook page. And if you can gather those together, that would be really helpful for later on. Now we're going to begin our worship by singing together, Great is thy faithfulness. Listen to Dermot O'Leary on a Sunday morning on Radio 2, you might have heard the Mystery Voice Competition, in which competitors uh, hear the voice of a famous person and they have to guess whose voice it is. It's surprisingly difficult. Now, I know some of you have got really used to doing Zoom competitions, uh, but we're not able to do that this morning. So we've brought on a couple of other contestants to help with the quiz. So we've brought back Seymour. And Sid. Hey, who's that <laughs> blue bird? Uh, it's what? Sid. 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 He normally, Sid. Well, he went to Sid, toast Sid. time this week. He's Sid. Anyway. Sid. <laughs> right. Yeah, are right, we, are okay. we doing this competition? Yeah, we better, haven't we? Right. We're going to listen to some voices, and you've got to say who they are. All right. Got it. Okay. Let's listen okay. to the first one. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> uh, that 
was Super Banana. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, it was Super Banana. <laughs> He's going he to infinity, was... He's Super Banana. He says it was Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear? No way. Uh, yes, I'm afraid it was Seymour. It was Buzz Lightyear. Oh, no. Come on, then. What Let's have the second one. Okay, we'll have the second one. Let's listen carefully this time. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. <laughs> Mary Poppins. Oh, I didn't even get a chance. Ah, well, Sid was quick off the mark there. I like a spoonful of sugar. Mm, goes well with, much, goes well much, with my nana. Oh, very ah, good, Seymour. Yes, right. Okay, thank you very much. Right, well, let's see how we can get on with the third one then. <laughs> yeah, we are winning, Sid. We are. Yeah, what? we are. We've got to catch up. Mm. Right, listen, I'm listening. Hey, Luke, may the force be with you. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> may the fourth be with you. It's this week. That was oh. Han Solo. That was Star Wars. He's got a Wookiee who works with him. He looks yeah. a bit like me. Yeah, he does look a bit like you, actually, Seymour. Thankfully, not too much like you. Hey, I win, I win. No, I know we didn't know that, Sid. You didn't know it, silly no, bird. Okay, let's right, carry okay, on. Okay, thank you. Right, listen very carefully to this next one then, see if you know who that is. I'm speaking to you at what I know is an increasingly challenging time. <laughs> Sid, uh, it is the... Well, I know who it is. Who? It's the Queen. I'm sorry, Sid, I didn't say it quick enough, did I? Anyway, we've got one more to go. I think we're nearly still winning. Nearly. Okay. Okay, it's right, a tie, I one. think. A tie, a tie. Last one. Right, okay, I'm listening. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. <laughs> it's Jesus. What? How do you know that? I don't know. How do you know that? Yeah, Sid says because he reads his Bible and it's words of oh. Jesus in the Bible. Really? Mm, it is, Sid. Have you got a Bible? Um, I've it's... got a Bible, yeah. Have you ever looked at it? Um, I looked at it. I can't read. Oh, dear. Seymour, can you not read? No. Oh, well, we'll have to give you a picture book then. And that might help you too. Okay. Right. Bird. I guess that means you won. I did. Thank you. Uh, Thank well, you. Okay. I wonder how you well, how well you got on at home. Did you do better than Seymour or Sid for that matter? Maybe you got all of them right. Do let us know in the comments later. Thank you. Well, we're going to do a song now that I think you might enjoy, Seymour. Oh yeah, what's that? It's called Bar Bar. He's the Good Shepherd. Let's see how well the children do at this one too.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're now going to say the collect of the day together, and then we're going to hear the Bible reading read by David Clark. So let's pray. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Today's reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 10. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow the stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So for our younger children then, if you want to be making something, um, you've got the card, you need to get your piece of card, you're going to fold it in half and glue it like an envelope. You're going to cut out the picture of the sheep to stick it on it. And you might like those who are older might like to write on it, my sheep listen to my voice. And then you've got the words um, on the piece of paper that you're going to cut out. And these are Bible verses that sometimes can help us when we just feel that we need to hear something from God. We need to be encouraged with a word from God. And so we're going to pop those Bible verses into the envelope. Voices often stick in our minds. Jean, not her real name, was in a coma in intensive care when I went to visit her and I spent some time talking to her and praying for her, but there was no response. I went back each week for a couple of weeks with no change. The following week, however, she was still in intensive care, but out of the coma. And as I walked towards her, I just spoke a greeting as I normally would do, and she just stared at me dumbfounded. It's you! She said, rather bemused, I asked her what on earth she meant. Well, she replied, the doctors told me that I've been in a coma for three weeks and I've no memory of that time at all. The only thing that I could remember was this voice speaking to me, but I thought it must have been a dream. It's only now when you greeted me that I recognised your voice at once. You came to visit me. It was your voice. Jesus told his followers that he's like a good shepherd and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. So if we're going to follow Jesus, we'll need to tune our ears in to recognising the voice of Jesus. Let's see how well we might know his voice from some quotes from the Bible. Here's the first one coming up on screen now. Let's see if you can fill in the blanks. Hopefully you've got that. That's therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. How about the second one? Love one another as I have loved you from John's Gospel. And how about this one? Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. 
and now a rather famous saying of Jesus. I wonder if you can fill in that last word. I am the way and the truth and the life. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then the last one. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Just now, we've got a, a Bible course going on to help us all to get to know a bit better the words of the Bible, to go through and to seek to understand so that when we're reading the Bible, we can ask ourselves the questions, what did it mean for the original hearers? And what does it mean for us now? So if we're thinking about this passage today, Jesus was asking uh, or telling his hearers that they were to uh, understand the voice like the sheep would hear the voice of the shepherd. Now they were used to seeing a Palestinian shepherd at the time would have uh, led the sheep out of the sheepfold and they would have had an enclosure that they went into at night and the shepherd would lay across the gateway and when he got up in the morning and sometimes if there was a big group and there might be more than one lot of sheep there uh, that actually as the shepherd spoke his sheep would recognize his voice and follow him. And whereas uh, Jesus compares it with the um, the ones that uh, are just hired hands where they don't really uh, know the sheep very well and the sheep don't trust them. So he put that in a little bit of context for them. So it was something that they were familiar with from looking around them, but he wanted them to go on to say, well, what does this mean for me? What does it mean for my life? And uh, we need to learn to recognise that the voice of Jesus is different. The sheep know the voice as the only one worth listening to. He wanted to show them that the voices that they heard around them were not always the ones they should have been listening to. He was meaning by that that the prophets and some of the others, some of the religious leaders of the time, were giving the wrong thing for them to listen to. For us today, that might mean that we need to be careful not to listen to the wrong voices. Sometimes we just listen to what the media wants to tell us and that might either make us angry or it might make us very worried. Certainly when we hear some of the reports at the moment, uh, the first thing that might come to us is to really be worried about the current situation, worried about our own health, worried about our children, worried about our loved ones. And yet Jesus wants to give us peace. And so if we turn to the scriptures, we can start to see things in the context of the bigger picture, helping us to see that actually God does have things in control. And people have often lived through very difficult situations, but being able to have peace within them, to know that God is there with them. When Fiona and I were talking about this, we. Uh, said to ourselves, well, this isn't the hardest situation that we've ever known. Many of the times that we had in Tanzania were far harder for us. When we had extremely ill health, sometimes even at risk of death, and sometimes even just in travel, the travelling situation was so bad that we didn't ever know if we would complete our journey safely. So we've lived through some very difficult times and we had to learn to trust the voice of God, that when he called us and when he sent us, that he would watch over us. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that everything will always be all right. But I think it does mean that we can have a life free from worry. And that actually, when we learn to trust God for all things, that we can have his peace in our hearts. Sometimes when we try to listen to the word of God, we might not really be sure what he's saying to us and we might need to test that word both from the scriptures and from other people. I remember as a, a young man when I was listening to what God might want me to do with my life that uh, I've, I saw an advert in a newspaper uh, for a job in Canada as a teacher and I thought, wow, that's it, that's what I'm going to do. And I went running up to one of my friends at the time and said, look, God's shown me what I'm going to do. And he said, well, how do you know? And I said, because it's here, it's an advert. And it just leapt off the page at me. 
and he was a bit more realistic and tried to bring me back down to earth. But actually, that was the voice of God to me. And as things turned out, uh, I was actually hearing what God was wanting me to do. And I think sometimes circumstances also show us we can want to listen to God, but we don't always get it right. So we need to learn to listen to the scriptures better, helping us to hear and to think, well, if that is God speaking to me, let's check it out against other scriptures and with other people to help me reflect on what God might be saying to me. If we need to really want to listen to God, then as Jesus said in that passage today, he comes to give us abundant life and his voice will often be different from the voices around us. It might come like that still small voice coming quietly like a niggle in our thoughts that won't quite go away. And when Jesus calls us to have an abundant life, he doesn't mean that it's going to be full of all the things that we might want, but rather that it will be full of the things that matter. Things like love and laughter and a freedom from fear or worry. And that voice might sometimes seem a little bit like a dream, but it's the only voice that is real. We need to learn to recognise the voice of Jesus for ourselves so that we follow him and no one else. Joan's going to lead us now in our prayers. As we enter the sixth week of our country's lockdown in this strange Easter season, let us bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father in the name of his Son, our Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus is the Good Shepherd and that he knows those who are the sheep of his pasture. Thank you that he still brings his flocks into his extended sheepfold and that he died so that we might live. Keep us mindful of false teachers who deliberately deceive and try to lead us astray. Please help us to keep looking towards Jesus so that we come to know him more and more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our good shepherd and we pray for the world we were given as an inheritance with the responsibility of caring for it as shepherds care for their flocks. Teach us to do this wisely and to share our planet's resources fairly among nations. May those who are guiding our nation and shaping our national policies at this difficult time make decisions that show concern for everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our good shepherd. Please show us how to thank doctors, nurses and all who work for the NHS, as well as medical researchers, all people who through their skills and insights and constant hard work help many to be restored to good health. Also how to appreciate all other frontline workers who daily place their, place their own lives in danger to supply us with necessities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our good shepherd, the one who seeks out the lost, the weak and the lonely, the poor and the sick. We pray that you will keep us positive in this time of uncertainty and distress and lift us up in the knowledge that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. Dear Lord, we have seen and heard of many remarkable examples of this during this crisis. Grant us the strength to comfort anyone we know as best we can, especially anyone who is anxious or fearful or isolated. Please assure them of our love and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our good shepherd and we ask you to be alongside our families and friends 
each of whose name you know. We pray that you will support our elderly and vulnerable people, that you will sustain any who are homeless or have mental health challenges, and that you will ensure our strong young citizens keep the necessary precautions so as not to unwittingly spread the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our Good Shepherd. In the midst of this pandemic, may we feel you near us all. Please be with those who have died from the virus. May they rest in your eternal peace. Please be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May Christians everywhere, whether they are surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, follow your example as we and they endure and mourn, so as to persist and be positive. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's pray together now in the words of the Lord's Prayer, in its traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We've been thinking quite a bit about sheep today, and so we're going to sing the Stuart Townend version of the 23rd Psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd. my shepherd I'll not want he makes me lie in pastures green he leads me by the still still waters his goodness restores my soul and I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy, I feast on his pure delights, and I will trust in you alone, and I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home. And though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one. For you are with me and your rod and staff are the comfort I need to know, and I will trust in you alone, and I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me on. I'd like to thank all those who've taken part again today, uh, thinking particularly of uh, David Clark and Joan Clark, who've recorded things for us, for Val, who's recorded the hymns. And uh, just to remind you all that uh, there will be things on the Facebook page as well for the children's activities that they can be involved in too. 
And uh, so now let's hear God's blessing for us all. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Well, it's goodbye for this week. I do hope you have a truly blessed week and that you learn to listen to that voice of Jesus day by day. Thank you for listening.